In this video, we'll make this floating wine bottle holder and cheese board, which I think make a great gift combination. I'll show how to cut this wide cracker groove on the cheese board, and also walk through the process of making this jig to cut the 45 degree angle hole in the wine bottle holders. Most important, I'll provide the angles and specific dimensions by which to make the wine bottle holder balance perfectly. So let's get started with that first. So just looking at the wine bottle holder drawing in SketchUp, I want to point out the three and really the only three critical dimensions to get the perfect balance with a wine bottle. First is the angles are 45 degrees. That's the bottom angle and also the angle that the hole is drilled at. The top angle doesn't matter. That can be anything you want to. The second critical dimension is that the hole needs to be drilled six and a half inches from the bottom edge. And the third critical dimension is the diameter of the hole is one and a quarter inches. So as long as you get all three of these specifications right, then your wine bottle will balance. And you can change the width of the board or the thickness or the total length, the species of the wood. It doesn't matter. There is one more thing I'd like to point out before leaving the SketchUp model, is that the effective depth of the hole is two and three eighths inches. To make that easier to visualize, I added this cylinder, say it represents the one and a quarter inch diameter drill bit. You can see that the total effective drilling depth of two and three eighths inches, even though the thickness of the wood is only three quarter inches. This is going to make cutting the hole a little more complicated because my small drill press only has a two inch spindle stroke. But I think I have a plan for that, so let's get started with the build. Building the jig to drill the one and a quarter inch hole at a 45 degree angle is the first step. I start with some one by four pine that I have left over from another project and cut four pieces. The base of the jig is 12 inches long. The workpiece support that has a 45 degree angle on it is 10 and three quarter inches long. The stop block is two inches and a piece from a two by four is the three inch support cut at a 45 degree angle. So I just glue up all of the pieces to create the jig and adding some brad nails should be strong enough and I'll let that dry overnight. I'm going to drill a guide hole in the jig before drilling an actual work piece. I want the edge of the guide hole to be three and a half inches from the stop block and roughly in the center of the jig. With the jig clamped down I drill the hole using a one and a quarter inch Forstner bit. The jig is complete. For the first time using this new jig, I'm going to do a practice piece. I find a good piece of practice wood from my scrap pile. I think it's a piece of poplar. First I cut a 45 degree bevel on each end. Gosh darn it, that's the wrong way. Good thing I'm practicing. So I cut it again the right way, but now it's going to be a little bit shorter than I plan on making the final pieces, but that's okay. Good enough to practice with. So I was just using the stock miter gauge that came with the table saw to cut those 45 degree bevels because I didn't have a cross cut sled that I could cut a 45 with. But in my frustration of making that dumb mistake, I decided to stop work on the wine bottle holder and go off and make this cross cut sled. Now I can cut 45 degree bevels with the cross cut sled. And I made a video of building this sled. I'll include a link here if you want to watch it. But for now, let's get back to the wine bottle holder build. So here's the process to use this jig. First line up the drill bit with the pilot hole in the jig and then clamp the jig down to the drill press base. Then line up the center line of the workpiece with the center line of the jig and clamp down the workpiece to the jig and we're ready to drill the hole. As I mentioned earlier, my drill press spindle will only go two inches, but we need two and three eighths inches to get all the way through. So I drill as deep as I can on the first pass and then raise the entire jig and workpiece and then finish the cut. Kind of a pain, but less painful than buying a bigger drill press, at least in my opinion. Time to try it out, and heck yeah, it works. So before moving on to drill the hardwood pieces, I'm a little concerned about using the Forstner bit. It was grabbing the grain quite a bit, and this is a pretty soft piece of wood. And since at least one of my actual hardwood pieces has some figured grain running all different directions, I don't believe the Forstner bit's gonna work. So I'm gonna try a hole saw instead. <laughs> 
This wasn't an easy hole saw to find. It needs to be one and a quarter inch diameter and at least two and three eighths inch deep. So I'm just flipping over my practice workpiece to drill a hole using the hole saw. It seems to be working much better. One downside of the hole saw is that the inside of the hole is much rougher than the Forstner bit and it'll take a little bit more sanding. So now with the jig made and tested, it's time to make the floating wine bottle holders. First I cut the pieces to width, which doesn't matter much. I'm shooting for three and a half inches wide, but a couple of them end up being closer to three inches. Then I'm using my new 45 degree bevel crosscut sled. I cut the pieces to length, which is 10 and three quarters inches total, which is the same as 10 inches along the flat side. So I go ahead and drill the holes using the jig and the same process that I used on the practice piece. I'm using this little sanding attachment for my drill to smooth out the inside of the hole since the hole saw left them a little rough. Then making use of the router table, I put a small round over on all of the edges. I'm going to sand and finish these the same way that I do cutting boards since it's my assumption these will be laying around on drink tables, getting dirty and wet, and sometimes just thrown in the sink with the dishes. So I sand them first with 120 grit and then 150 grit, and then raise the wood grain by spraying water on them. This is an important step, otherwise after they're in use, the first time they got wet, they would get pretty rough. So raising the grain and then sanding again before finishing should prevent that. So after they're dry, then I sand with 220 grit sandpaper. And then I go and raise the grain again just to make sure, wait for them to dry again and do a final sanding, very light sanding with 220 grit again. I'll finish these with mineral oil and cutting board wax at the same time I do the cheese board towards the end of the video. So let's move on to building the cheese board next. To get started on the cheese board, I cut some hardwood into 13 and a half inch links on my miter saw. I really like the light and dark contrast of maple and walnut together, and then adding some color with paduk. This is going to be just a simple face grain cutting board, so I use the table saw to cut the widths to make the pattern that I'm looking for. So I was inspired to make this design by seeing the work of Jacob over at the wood plank. You should check out his work. He is a true artist with woodworking. To make sure the joints are as clean as possible, I run each edge through the joiner and using the planer for the more narrow pieces instead of the joiner. And then just double checking the fit of each joint along the way, both sides, and making sure that the grain pattern looks good. Then I mark the layout and it's ready for glue up. I'm using Type Bond 3, which is a glue that's waterproof and FDA approved food safe, so it seems appropriate for cutting boards like this. When the glue is dry, just make sure to remove any remaining chunks of glue before running it through the planer. I cleaned the glue off pretty good when it was still wet, so not much to do here. Using the planer to get the faces flat and parallel, Multiple ultra shallow passes here is important to avoid any tear out of the grain. Then over to the table saw using a crosscut sled to square up the ends and then I sand it with 120 grit. To round off the corners I mark the radius that I want. I'm just using a washer here. Then I use the band saw to knock off the corners and then the bench sander to really dial in the radius I want on each corner. And with the handheld router, then I put a small round over around all the edges on both sides. On the router table, I put in a one and three quarter inch crown router bit to cut the cracker groove with. With some careful measurements to get the fence and the stop blocks just in the right place, then I do a very shallow initial cut. Shallow is important for a couple of reasons. First of all, this crown bit doesn't plunge very well. And also with a shallow initial cut, then I can measure and make sure the groove is right where I want it on the board and make any small fence adjustments at this point if necessary.
Then I make five successive cuts, each time a little deeper until the groove is the depth I'm looking for. This cracker groove requires some hand sanding, but it's not too bad and it goes pretty quickly. Then I sand the entire board with 150 grit, being careful to blow the red sawdust off as I sand so it doesn't contaminate the maple too much. After sanding with 150 grit, then I spray it with water to raise the grain and let that dry. Then I sand the board with 220 grit and then spray it with water to raise the grain again. And then I do a very light sanding for a final pass with 220 and it's ready to finish. So I'm finishing both the floating wine bottle holders and the cheese board with the same approach. I'm applying a food safe mineral oil, kind of rubbing it in, and I'm going to let that dry overnight. And the final step is just buffing on some cutting board wax. These things are really gorgeous. I love cheese and crackers. Add some wine and I'm a happy guy. Cheers.